allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank everyone for attending the council meeting Tuesday, May 21st. All of my colleagues are here, along with the contingent from the auditor's office. We've got a lot to accomplish tonight, but I think we can do this efficiently and timely. 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 Okay, timely. I'll leave out efficient. And timely. I look at efficiency. First on the agenda is our public hearing on the lit tax. Uh, increase for EMS and I will read this ordinance as it is and then I will open the public meeting it's ordinance 04162024 B as in boy ordinance modifying local income tax rates for Fulton County be it ordained by the County Council of Fulton County that a need now exists to modify the local income tax rates imposed in the following way. And it's certified shares, existing lits 1.0, proposed 1.0. Public safety is 0.55%. Proposed is 0.55%. Economic development is 0.20%. Proposed lit rate is 0.20%. Property tax relief is 0.48%, proposed is 0.48%. The special purpose rate is 0.25%. The proposed lit rate is 0.25%. Correctional and rehabilitation facilities is 0.2%. Proposed is 0.2%. Emergency medical service is 0 0.00. The proposed rate is 0.20% and staff expenses for state judicial system is 0, 0.0, proposed rate is 0, 0.0. The local income tax rate proposed above will become effective on October 1st, 2024. And then we'll be it further ordained that a public hearing was held on a proposal income tax rate modifications on May 21st, 2024. Proper notice of the public hearing was provided pursuant to IC code 5-3-1. So at this time, I don't feel I have to worry about decorum and to say those things. So I will now open the hearing to a public hearing. Comments from the public and or board members. Public first. Is there anyone that has any comments? Well, that's a done deal, right? We're open to comments. <laughs> So, pointless. Okay, if that, that's it. first, please your Good name. And it young. Thank you very much. But you know, is it pointless? Well, I mean, I it's, mean, it's decided. So. Well, that's why we're having a public hearing. What public? Again, that's not. <laughs> it was published in the paper, and I and I don't think I saw it in the shoppers here. Maybe I did, but. I know it's published in the paper. By law, it has to be. And nobody reads the paper anymore. <laughs> that, that I can't argue with. I know, that's true. <laughs> Board members? Like we've discussed before, it's kind of a necessary evil. No one wants to do it, but we need to. We but, need to but if everyone wants we need ambulance to service, yes. then it, yeah. it's got to no be paid for. No one's excited to raise taxes, but we have, to, we have to generate revenue to provide an ambulance service. That's true. So it's got to, what's all that in English then? Well, what's all that? Okay. Uh, what, what, do you, what, what do you mean, what's all this in what, English? All this never, da, da, da. What's the actual increase going to be for, for an individual or whoever? It's going to increase by 0.2%, which before, as, as we talked before, and again, I'll, I'll, so, uh, average of a fifty thousand dollar increase. Right. 
two tenths. That'd be about a hundred bucks a year. Two tenths of one percent. Two tenths of one percent. Yes, yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah, all that other stuff. I don't... Well, this is what we're collecting now. Okay. This is that, and the proposed rate of that did not increase. The only thing that increased was the emergency medical service. So, so just the That's what the state has allowed us to two do tenths to generate. We're still back to the yeah. Yeah. Two tenths. That's correct. No, that's fine. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comments? When did you say it was effective? October 1st of this year. Will this generate enough to cover the expenses then needed? We hope, but we don't know for sure. It It's going to be close. Um, but we, if it doesn't, we can absorb the rest I heard a question last evening at the commissioner's meeting about property taxes, and at this time, no. I say that at this time, but as it stands right now, no, property taxes will not have to be increased to cover the EMS service per se. Again, we hope. Is there an estimate on how much this will? how much revenue this will generate? Somewhere in the vicinity of a million dollars a year. Uh, again, it depends on our, our median income and you know the tax rate. Um, we have talked or we feel that income tax would draw for more people because property taxpayers, there are more people working than there are property taxpayers. So therefore, this kind of covers the bill more with income than it would with property. And property taxes, quite honestly, are, they're saddled with enough. Well, and I think if doing it with the um, local income tax, then everyone, more people share, I don't want to say burden, but everyone shares in having the ambulance service rather than just people that pay property taxes. Right. That's my feeling. <clears throat> I know another question. No, absolutely. I mean, well, I should not say this, but I'm gonna. <laughs> I talked to like Jack Jordan here a month or so ago, and he's telling me, I mean, he's aware the whole state's having the same problem. With ambulance service. Yeah, all yeah. counties around, everybody's having the same thing. The states, he said, they're gonna look at it hopefully next year and. In the general not, assembly, not promise anything, but maybe start helping out. Say if we would get, say more money from the state, can we rescind this if we, you know, if we do get enough to cover it from state or federal? I talked to Rudy Yoakum, Yoakum also, and he was said the same thing. He's aware everybody's aware of the problem. If we, if we would ever, you know, in the next few years, if we can get you know state or federal funding to take, can we rescind this? Then I, I will assume. This this is not to be a well, this is only good for 22 years. I mean, there is a time limit on the amount that we can either use this. So, yeah, well, in 22 years, figure out another way to pay for ambulance service. Yeah, but I mean, but say in the next no two three years, if we would get some federal or state funding to help offset it, can we rescind this so we can get our local people's? Like I know, I know nothing's promised or don't even count on it, but just if, if what if. You know what I mean? No, absolutely, and I hope that we can do that. Yeah. That what we that would give us time also to see exactly the numbers that we get in income, yeah. and see how that is going to affect our budget uh, overall. Right. And uh, but yeah, no, that's um, the ones I've talked to. You know, this year wasn't a budget year, right. so therefore they weren't going to talk money down in state. But next next year is a budget yes. year, and so that would be the time to bring it up. Right, and like Jack said, they were they were going to bring it up, but not promising nothing, of course, you know. But just if they would. No, absolutely, it's a good question. They will, I mean, it would help with it. Not the you know, burden, or you know. And it's a good thing it. that that our legislators are aware that this is a problem throughout the yeah, state. The statewide, mm -hmm. even countrywide. Yes. Rody Yakim said the same thing, the whole country is having the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So this isn't particular to us, unfortunately. Right. I have no other questions or comments. Well, should I explain some of the costs involved in that? 
those two. That's up to you. I'm going to attempt to cover some of the costs. Gail can help me out some on this. I was hoping Rick would be here so he can help me out. But of course, everyone knows that the company, well, they don't know, but the commissioner signed a contract last night with Parkview. Um, they did not sign. Well, they approved Correct. the contract. That's, I'm sorry, my wording is wrong. They approved the contract with Parkview EMS service to handle our EMS and ambulance service from Jan July 1 mm -hmm. of this year for technically be a four and a half year contract. The first year of the contract is runs at a hundred thousand dollars a month. That's a stipend we have to pay Parkview for them to provide the ambulance service. They put three ambulances um, in Akron, Rochester, Kiwana. There'll be a fourth spare ambulance in Rochester, and also a paramedic chase truck. Is that correct? No. There's three ambulances and a chase truck. Three ambulances and a chase truck, okay. And mm -hmm. uh, we've gone through so many contracts. Changes That's okay. Forget. Now, Parkview does their business model different. Fulton County is purchasing the ambulances. And, and large ticket items, capital assets is the, the word they use. We have to purchase those. We, Parkview will purchase them, we reimburse Parkview, up to a maximum of $1.2 million over two years. Should something happen in the next four years that we decide, they decide to back out, we decide to back out, those assets are the counties. That's the way they do their business model. They do their business model as a partnership, not as a vendor. So, um, so that's where we stand. This first six months from July 1 to December 31 is $100,000 a month. Um, that's all the numbers we have. Uh, their idea is based on staffing. Uh, ambulances first thought were probably two years out to get ambulances and now they're thinking it could be a lot less. 44 days. 44 days, okay. Could be 43. They thought, they thought they had three setting based on whether or not we approved the contract. And so until then, they will put used ambulances in there that we do not pay for. We do not have to pay for used demo ambulances. All we pay for is the new ones. When the new, and with their purchasing power, they can purchase a cot, you know, the, the cots, the, I'm gonna say Lucas device, cause I can't think of the name of the other it's one. It's their rating, they get a better rate. They get better rates, they get better. <clears throat> Parkview takes care of all the insurance. So we are not liable or you know, the, the comprehensive and all that stuff. <coughs> That's Parkview's. So those are, the basic numbers of what we talked about. Um, again, there was a maximum of 1.2, anything over 1.2 million dollars, that's on part view. Your capital asset list will have the VIN number in it, so whatever purchases over a $5,000 purchase um, will be established on your capital asset form. And they have to we go through did, us to approve. Yeah, so that uh, has to be filled out before the check goes to part with the VIN number, so we get those back in case the contract is ended. The equipment that we purchased and not something that's 20 years old. So how long do we have to pay the, the, the end cost of ambulance, as you say? We have 45 days from, from the ambulance purchase, uh, 45 days from the, mo the monthly stipend Correct. is, is we got, we got time, because what to do is we have, to, the commissioners have to approve the claim, then we have to approve the claim. So we wanted to build in time in there so that we could, you know, do it without 
putting ourselves in. So you talk about the hundred thousand, hundred grand a month, or the both? <laughs> okay. So the one point two for the ambulance says we had to come up with that. Well, as an ambulance is delivered, we don't have to come up with it all at once. We only pay for things that are delivered. The, only, the, the big question was all of a sudden they said, well, yeah, we can get three. So, but the three ambulances aren't $1.2 million. But yes, it is, because we were hoping we could spread the ambulances out over time, right. of course, to help our finances while we could. Do we have a cost of the other capital assets then too? Like how much we might be looking at? Um, no, we, we really don't because we don't know the cost of COTS or or the, the uh, CPR machines, but everything over $5,000 is considered, is considered a, capital. a capital asset. And he even said, Chad even said in one meeting, quite possibly won't be $1.2 million. Right. Because of their purchasing power and their ability to negotiate pricing. And they, they, they have to come to us for approval to, to purchase that. So you're saying no more than 1.2 million? That's correct. Okay. okay. So some of those ambulances at their rate are 250,000. So if you look at that with the chassis, and then obviously we purchased a striker cop at Ford, though um, ours was around 40 grand. They'll, they'll be a little less, obviously, and um, they'll put those in, but those are the assets that will belong on those rigs. Any soft, soft costs, such as expendables and that, those are part views to absorb as part of the contract. Sounds good. So are there any other questions? If not, I will close this public meeting and I will read this ordinance by title only. This is the third and final reading. Ordinance 04162024B as in boy. Ordinance modifying local income tax rates of Fulton County. I will accept a motion to approve. I will move to approve the ordinance um, for the increase in the lit EMS tax. Feel a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. Lori seconding. All in favor, right hand please. It would be 7-0. Thank you very much, everybody. And I'm sorry, I agree with you, public hearing should be public, but if you can't get anyone to come, this is what it is. But thank you for attending. And we got signed signatures. Signatures. <clears throat> Sign and pass. Next on the agenda is 24 salary ordinance amendment. And I'll read this on the title and then I'll go to the section that, um, that's amended. That's amended, that's good, thank you. Ordinance 12122023 is the first amendment of the ordinance amending County Fulton, Indiana salary schedule and compensation policy for 2024 and if we go to communications well the uh, personnel policy committee the job classification committee. yeah that thing. job classification <laughs> committee i'm sorry <laughs> voted to increase the number of dispatch full-time dispatchers from eight to nine is that correct yes we did this okay and at a rate of 21 dollars and 99 cents an hour That is the only part of this that changed. So I entertain a motion to approve this amendment as read. I'll move to approve. Bill moved to approve. Steve moved to second. All in favor? Six zero. Pete abstains. Well, there's one thing we're going to do. Next is a change in the Fedco 
agreement. And I will read this as the agreement for 2024 Economic Development Services. This fee is for service. Agreement is effective January 1 of 2024 and by and between Fulton County and the Fulton County Economic Development Corporation and Indiana Private Not-for-Profit Corporation. Fulton County desires to maintain a viable and respected economic development presence that conducts programs and activities for future economic development and growth in accordance with county needs and long-term goals. The Fulton County Economic Development Corporation agrees to provide certain standard, commonly accepted economic development services and services which result in a design and implementation of long-term projects relating to economic workforce and commercial, industrial, or related business developments in Fulton County. So this change in the agreement is, so this agreement is from January 1st, 2024 through 31st day of December, 2024. In return for the services enumerated herein, the county agrees to pay the Fulton County Economic Development a fixed sum of $130,000 toward the Economic Corporation 2024 budget less than the North Central Indiana Regional Planning Council dues in the amount of $15,697. Fulton Economic Development Corporation has received payments in the amount of $18,383 and 34 cents to date, leaving a balance of $95,919.66 for 2024. The remaining balance will be split into eight remaining monthly payments to be made equal installments of $11,989.96. The reason for this change is that the North Central Indiana Regional Planning Council, of which Fulton County is a part of, we are the only county that their economic development pays their dues. Every other county has this separated. And so that's why we are doing this. We included, um, it used to be called MACOG, but it's not that anymore. North Central Indiana Regional Planning Council's dues in with FEDCO. In with FEDCO and FEDCO paid it, but they want this separated. That is the reason we have to change this agreement. Does it end up the same as what we created? It's yeah. identical. It's okay. all it is is an accounting feature. Okay. Are there any questions? I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Pete moved to approve. We'll take second. Randy seconded. All in favor? Right hand, please. Seven zero. Thank you very much. Again, we have. Is everybody signed? I believe so. Sign and pass. Ooh, we're busting right along. We are. We're doing good. Next on the agenda is the auditor's request. Casey's interested in this one. Oh, and by the way, board, this is Casey Jones. He's in the auditor's office, I apologize for not. Um, and this is the auditor's request. Part-time employee is reducing hours down to two days a week and will be retiring July 11th. I have a new full-time employee who started work on April 29th. Another new full-time employee who's begun work on May 13th. All three new employees will be working primarily at the counter and answering incoming calls. I've hired a part-time employee to replace a retiring employee. However, I would like to request to begin her on June 3rd to have plenty of time to train with the employee who is only available to work two days a week. I am also requesting additional time due to all three employees being experienced and new to county government. It would be helpful for all three of them to be in training and learn the same information together. I do not need additional funds for the overlap. Any questions? So in essence, what she's asking is, is typically they're given two weeks. Yes. But now she's asking for, I, I don't know, a month or whatever additional time, and she's got the money in her budget to and pay she, for yes, that. Yes, she has the so, money in her budget to cover it. So there's no additional cost right, to county, right. and it gives the new employees a chance to learn. You bet. 
Yeah. And we want them to Agreed. be successful. Well, we want them to be successful, plus there's a lot to learn. You betcha. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think uh, we have to, I think oh, we just give a blessing. We don't need a vote on that, do we? Um, let's vote. Okay. I will entertain a motion to approve the auditor's request for overlap in pay at no cost to the county for the auditor's office. Steve approved. Steve second. Lori seconded. All in favor? 7-0. Thank you very much. We don't need to sign that one. Travis, you want to stand up there? You want to sit there while I read this and we go through this? Because there's going to be questions. I know there's going to be questions. Yeah, so. Whatever you guys need. And even though we have approved this already, um, the commissioners made a change. Therefore, we have to reapprove it as written. And so I will read this. And this is, and then, and then after I read it, then we'll give Travis a chance to answer questions that are pertaining to this, because I know there's some coming. Z Ordinance 05212024 is amending the Jail and Detention Center Population General Ordinance of 10192020. Whereas the County Commissioners of Fulton County adopted General Ordinance Number 10192020 Jail and Detention Center Population Ordinance on November 2nd, 2020, and the County Council adopted on November 17th, 2020, to maximize revenues by offering available space to house out of county inmates at a negotiated per diem rate per person per day. And whereas Ordinance 10192020 establishes the Fulton County Jail Facility Fund local fund number 4300 for collected per diem charges for use of unoccupied beds. And whereas 10192020 directs said funds collected to be placed in specific categories, 70% will be held for debt reduction, 15% will be held for maintenance of the jail facility, and 15% will be held for operation of the jail facility. Whereas it is necessary for keeping the funds separate for specified use to create additional local funds to hold charges collected for housing out of county inmates. And whereas it is necessary to define the purpose of three total funds that will hold the charges collected for housing out of county inmates. Therefore, be it ordained to create and maintain a total of three funds to hold charges collected for housing out of county inmates for use as follows. Fund 4300. Fulton County Jail Facility Fund shall now be used for holding 70% of the charges collected for housing out of county inmates for a period of 10 years for the purpose of paying down the debt reduction in accordance with applicable Indiana codes and bond trustee guidelines. Fund 4301, Fulton County Jail Maintenance Fund shall be established for holding 15% of the charges collected for housing out of county inmates for maintaining the jail facility, jail facility grounds, equipment to be used for maintaining the facility and or its grounds, building and or maintaining storage space for equipment to be used for maintaining the facility and or its grounds, or any other purpose the Fulton County Council approves. Fund 4302. Fulton County Jail Operations Fund shall be established holding 15% of the charges collected for housing out of county inmates for supporting wages for all Sheriff's Department personnel, including employees of the jail facility, the Sheriff's Department employees, merit deputies, benefits, supplemental wages, training, food, medical supplies, and staff. These funds may be used, utilized as requested by the Fulton County Sheriff and appropriated by the Fulton County Council. This ordinance shall be in full force in effect upon passage. So, I know we have a couple of questions from up here. Well, I've already. Oh, I didn't know. I, I, I asked him, but. Um, Sorry, Travis. So, no, you're fine. But, so, so you might tell what precipitated this. I, I didn't know it was the commissioner. So if you 
So what? Yeah, yeah, compared compared to what you guys signed at the last meeting versus tonight, uh, <coughs> Mr. Lewis, Commissioner Lewis, wanted to add a couple words on there. With he talked to Holly, and and it basically it was uh, uh, food, <coughs> medical supplies, and staff um, is what he included in, in paragraph three. Um, I think he just wanted to outline that a little more clear for. Um, future. I mean, I don't think he foresees any issues with the current council, current commissioners, current sheriff, hopefully, but um, just kind of locking that in um, that way, you know, it's going to be utilized for its intended purpose. Had, that brings up a point. Had something happened um, at the sheriff's department where where those, the food and what are medicals, where they weren't identified? How they, where they'd be paid from, or wasn't that? Yeah, I, so our, our food service and our medical is under contract. They're right. Not, they're not county employees. So right. I think that was, I don't want to speak for him, but I think that was his thought process okay. being able to, to utilize these funds for operational costs with the, the medical contract or food service. You kind of narrow it down. Right. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Do you have a question? Do you understand what we're doing? Okay, all right. I, just I wasn't make... born yesterday. No, I understand. I just want to make sure that, that everyone out here understands what we're doing. This is an accounting yeah. picture that... It really got brought up because of the, it was two parts. The funds, the original ordinance in 2020 said 15% shall be placed in an operational fund, but that operational fund was never created. Right. Same thing with the maintenance, it was never created. So right. it was all put into a to one fund, assuming that 15% would be taken out for these. Um, and then operational fund and maintenance fund was never really defined what is maintenance. What, what can we use that money for for maintenance? What can we use it for for operations? So that's all this is, is, is just basically defining what the intended purpose was in 2020 when the, when the ordinance was passed. So. And cleaning it up. Cleaning it up. Absolutely. Absolutely. We like clean. And right now we've got, I got the numbers here somewhere in one of these papers. You want the number for the, we got? Well, this is what I have right here. Balance as of 430. And the 4300 fund is $725,918. Right. And change. Yeah, so 15% of that would be 109,000 roughly. Yeah. Um, 109,000 for maintenance, 109,000 for operations. And that grows every month. Yeah, yeah, and I'll, when we do the. We'll talk about yeah. that. All right, so any other questions? Anybody in public for here? If not, I will entertain a motion to adopt ordinance. Steve, motion to approve, second. Randy, move to second. All in favor? Seven zero, thank you very much. That's exactly why well, I did. Yeah, that plan ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Not a lump on the wall. Mostly, but not oh, signatures. All. Please. Signatures. So, go ahead, Travis. Okay. So, uh, reports, uh, April reports, monthly reports were mailed out, uh, emailed out, I think yesterday. Um, any questions or anything on those? Collections report and everything. We did notice an in increase in the uh, inmate medical copay. Um, that's a direct result of your guys' passing the ordinance to have the inmates start paying a little bit more um, for their medical copay, so then I'll follow the taxpayers. So um, thank you. Um, we're going to hopefully see that increasing more um, as that goes on. So um, we had 130 inmates this morning, seven federal inmates, 38 from Grant County, 45 from Howard County. Zero DOC holds now. Great. Um, Gracious, Grant and Howard Grant. County. Yeah. Really. So they're I both. Don't know about Grant. Yeah, we, we got that ordinance passed last commissioner's meeting, I think. They reached out to Kathy last month. They're, they're overcrowded. Um, Howard County's been overcrowded. The nice thing about that is is there's no end in sight for them. So um, <coughs> they maintain holding and make sure them for an indefinite period of time. So um, we're pretty comfortable with where we're at right now with 130. Just as a reminder, we did contract with the Marshall Service for 50 beds. They've never been anywhere close to that, um, but we want to we want to make sure those beds are available to them if, if they would need it. So, at 130, we're we're pretty comfortable with classification um, of inmates and then keep separates and things like that. So, 
it's not causing any undue stress on the staff right now. So, um, with that, we uh, invoiced for forty, a little over forty-seven thousand last month for out-of-county inmates. Um, I foresee that to double next month. It'll be over a hundred thousand next month, and again, probably for the foreseeable future, um, with Howard and Grant County utilizing uh, our bed space. So. Uh, corrections on any of that or questions on any of that yes ma'am so so uh does that mean that you will th you think that the inmates from grant and howard will double no i don't think i'm saying our invoice are we, we've never held this many out of county inmates okay um, so <coughs> what we're invoicing out we invoiced out forty seven thousand last month between doc the counties and the feds i foresee that doubling to, okay. to over a hundred thousand a month for invoicing out. So this isn't Good putting deal. any undue stress on. So no, I mean we're adequately staffed. We've had to okay. get some inmate supplies and things. Um, she had to order more mattresses, more blankets. That'll be one of those things that we'll look at towards the end of the year. At, at, you know when we're looking at the budget to see if we need to come and ask you guys for anything out of the operational funds from this to to recoup some of the the, the losses on that. Um, but you know right now we feel pretty comfortable. Um, food may be one of those things too that. That we may have to come back so uh, but again that's why that operational funds there so uh, you know to, to offset the cost of, of housing these additional inmates so yes sir what is our max uh, refreshment what's our max absolute max is 230 ish and i say ish because of the group holding um you know it depends on who you ask is how many people you can fit in there um, we can't maintain any more than 80 percent for any extended period of time by jail standards 80 percent of the 238 right 230 ish yeah oh wow yeah. Okay. If you have fluctuations, you have daily fluctuations or things, I mean, that's one thing, but to maintain over 80%, you're going to start getting, you're going to start getting into the issues that Grant Howard County are into right now, so. Huh. And then they get some of their people back. Exactly. Yep. And that's, yeah, that's, it's an easy fix for us, so. Huh. Yeah, because yeah, we're not going over. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Like I said, we're pretty comfortable with where we're at right now, so. Interesting. Anything else on those? Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting. Um, last couple of weeks, we uh, celebrated Corrections and Law Enforcement Week. Um, thank you to everybody that stopped out to see us, Southern County employees, elected officials, to say thank you. Um, the presence did not go unnoticed. It was very much appreciated. We did do the uh, Ride to Lightning um, event for Shop with a Cop. That was uh, two employees. So we had eight of them actually volunteer to uh, get tased if they uh, raised too much money, enough money. Um, we actually had two of them um, incredibly tie at the end, so um, we ended up tasing two of them on the employee appreciation luncheon last week. But we raised over $1,500 for Shop of the Cop, so that all stayed local and, and uh, was uh, deposited this week. So um, the ordinances, we've already went over. Um, we got to give uh, ISA uh, scholarships, Indiana Surf Association scholarships to two local students, Brianna Yarber and Jacob Sager. Um, for $750. This was issued by me but through the Indiana Sheriff's Association. Brianna is actually an employee of ours um, in the jail part-time. She uh, be a senior trying this fall, um, completing her senior year for a bachelor's degree. Jacob is a senior um, in high school this year. He'll be attending IUK for criminal justice in the fall. Uh, Reserve Deputy Clark Croft uh, graduated the Reserve Academy last week. Um, the Reserve Academy is uh, hosted by Kosciuszko County, they put on all the training. It's basically a condensed version of the Law Enforcement Academy that we go through, but it's over 200 hours of volunteer time that they have to put in. He started the first week in January and graduated last week. So it was a couple evenings a week and then every other Saturday. Um, yeah, it's, it's a great program and it's, it's, I mean, it's awesome that he was able to dedicate and was willing to dedicate that amount of time for the reserve program, which is also volunteer, so. We thank him for that. So, and that's all I've got for that. Interesting. Thank you. So, I am going to present for Chad. He wasn't able to be here tonight. Um, as part of that ordinance for the jail maintenance and everything, we've been looking at a maintenance building that we desperately needed since the uh, jail was built. Um, he's been reaching out and getting bids and things um, for a full building. He's looking at a 40 by 80 um, full building. Of all the bids that he had come in, Burns Building came in at the lowest at 103,000. Um, 
So talking to the commissioners last night, they were all in agreement that yes, it's something that we need and, and we need to move forward on. So I guess I'm looking for you guys for a motion to move forward with purchasing and building a maintenance building out there using the maintenance fund, the 4302 maintenance fund, um, which isn't gonna cost Fulton County taxpayers any money. This would be built out there. And yeah, yeah. I think he was looking down the, the lane down by the tower, down that direction, I think is where he was looking. Um, so, and I guess with that motion, I would be looking at, because there is concrete and electrical and finishing work, um, if we could do a motion that just says, do not exceed the available balance in the maintenance fund, and then that way, you know, because if, if he calls today and says, okay, we want to do this, it's going to be three to six months before they even start, you know, building a building and then electrical and everything else, which will give ample time for that fund to build up to, to cover all the expenses. So, so the 103000 is Hundred and three is the building itself. Right. He was looking at roughly sixteen for concrete, um, sixteen for concrete, and then electric. And I don't know if he's got a bid on electric yet or not. Does that include the doors? Yeah, that includes the doors. I don't know about openers, but it does include the doors. Forty three oh two at the end of last month was only showing like seven thousand four hundred thirty one dollars. Yeah, because they haven't got it all moved over yet. And Sean well, tells me it over for higher. higher. Pardon me, from over the 4,300, that $700,000. Okay, all right. 15% of that goes into maintenance, 15% of that goes into maintenance. Okay, operations. all right. I'm yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I good. I wasn't well, I putting that, that together. Too. Yeah, <laughs> and I talked to I wasn't thinking about was those, that was the same one. She was under the impression that it was just at the start of 24 that that money got moved over. I think it was like 36,000 this morning when I looked. Okay. Um, yeah, but if you do the math on the 700,000 that's in there, It'd be 109 okay. something is in there now. Okay. Um, we invoice another hundred thousand next month. That's another fifteen grand that's going to go in there next month. So, um, so I, if we could just do it to, you know, we'll make sure that we don't go over what's available. So, so not to exceed what? So what's the what figure? Well, so I wouldn't have any idea what construction costs are. Um, um, electrical construction. Yeah. Well, I don't have a clue, so you, you guys make it up. It looks, yeah, it looks like I've got 124.5 written down here plus electric for 13. So the 124.5 would be 16 with concrete, and then it looks like 13,000 for electrical. So the total is not to exceed what? 150. 150? That would get us there, 124 and 13. I say as long as we don't exceed what's in the fund what's so in the mean, fund yeah, yeah. That's, Let's see what's in i the personally don't have a problem with it as long as it's basically self-funded from the fund. yeah no, right, right. right. Yeah. And, and that's what we're looking yeah, for right. yeah i mean however we need to word that so that it comes out of that fund and it won't short that fund in the near future no um, no i don't i don't foresee it i think it's you know with, with what we're holding right now it's going to rebound i know we've talked about it for the last couple of years of getting that maintenance building here. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the problem that we're running into is inspection time. We have to go around and hide all of our equipment. Um, and that's when we know that the inspections are coming. If, if we get surprise inspections, we get we get dinged on mowers and gas cans and things in the Sally Port that have no business being in there. So, or we've got things in hallways and chases that- You that must need something be besides be. mowers and gas cans. 40 by 80, a whole lot of gas Well, that's, that's what we're looking at. What we're looking at, I mean, we're looking at file storage. Um, it's gonna have the, Mezzanine, mezzanine, whatever. Mezzanine. Um, mezzanine. 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 So, um, so will this be built this year? We're hoping. <coughs> we're, we're hoping with your with your guys' blessing tonight. We're hoping to call them, say yes, we're good to go, and then get put on the schedule. Okay. Um, so, and again, when he talked to them in the spring, they were, I think, three to six out. I don't know if they're still at that or or even further, but that's what we're wanting to get is put on the schedule. So. And then you guarantee the price. Right, locked in. Yeah, you know, locked in the price. You know how many bids he got? I'm just curious. He said FBI. He said he reached out to FBI. They were more expensive. Then Twin Peaks didn't get back with him. Um, so Burns came in the cheapest. Any other questions? I have one. And I'll enter, may, entertain a motion to approve Travis's request. Motion to approve. Steve, motion to approve. I have a second. Oh, Rand, oh, thank you, Randy. Randy, Randy seconded. Randy, okay. I couldn't see him back there. Okay. Randy seconded. All in favor? 7 0.
And that request is to not exceed what's in the mail. Not to exceed what's in the mail. Back and saying. forth a little bit there, so I just want to make sure. <laughs> All right. That's all as I've long got. as you keep us surprised, yeah, and I, we don't want any surprises down the road. No, I understand. It's going to come in stages. I mean, it's you know the electrical is going to be obviously be afterwards. Concrete's going to come in first, so I mean it'll be it'll come in stages. You got so. 108 right now. Yep. You know that. Yep. Yeah, we know that, so we can lock in the firm. So, all right. All right. thank you. Thank you, Travis. Mr. Geyer. Steve. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Contrary to proper popular belief, I don't have a lot. You don't? I don't. Yay! Um, just give me an update on what they're doing. Uh, they've been patching holes, running the brush cutter, or changing a lot of culverts. Uh, they're working on some today, even. Uh, they've been sodding roads. Uh, we started chip sealing last week, actually. Cool. So um, we went after, uh, we got almost done with Liberty Township. Um, we wanted to get after the detour that's coming around later this summer. So we went ahead and chipped that and got it prepped. So it will hopefully hold the sacred 25 traffic when they cut it loose on there. Because last time when they cut it loose, it destroyed the road and then NDOT paid for repaving that. So we wanted to preserve it and Try to keep it from being destroyed again. Do we have the same agreement with NDOT? To... Yeah. So, um, but it's a lot better road. Last time it was about this thin. You know, it's an old chip seal road. <laughs> now it's we've got you know that much as asphalt on it, so it should be a lot different this time around. We hope. Uh, we did make our uh, PUD for the year. Uh, they pulled out yesterday from making that central paving comes up from Lotusport. Central Pub Mill makes that. So we've got a big pile out there in the back lot. Um, so when we get done chipping this season, we'll go to Pub Um Talking about the detours, State Road 14, you guys probably already know, it, it's closed at different times uh, west of 17. Uh, so we've got two detours for that going around 550 south and 400 north. So dealing with that. And then back down to 25, they're gonna close that here sometime between June and July. Don't know exactly. Whenever they get the bridge at Fulton done, they can move up to Mud Creek area, which is about 500 south on 25. And detour traffic around the country on our roads. So is that there by, um, Harry Richter's place? Yes. Yeah, right there north of his house, or what was his house. So, um, other than that, I wanted to talk to you. You know, I talked to the commissioners last night about purchasing a flail mower. Uh, I have it budgeted, so I don't really need any approval, but just let me know. The quote I got was for, I think, nearly 13000 What's a flail mower? Yeah, it's one that's got knives on a drum cuts the grass this way. Uh, what we've been using is disc bind, which are basically hay vines. Mm -hmm. uh, this has got a lot less wear parts. And it's something we're looking at trying. We're always looking for something better. <coughs> it costs a little bit more, but we spend an unbelievable amount on repairs and maintenance on the others. So we're hoping putting a little couple more thousand up front will save us many thousand. Mm -hmm. A lot of time and downtime from sitting there when you break something, wait for the mechanics. I've been there, done that. Yeah, I have too. <laughs> mowing the, and we've been mowing. Uh, we started mowing the first of May. Um, so we've been out there mowing. You probably can't hardly tell sometimes because with the rain and heat, the grass has been growing. <coughs> we do have three mowers going every day, so it takes a while to get over 800 miles. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk to you about, and I didn't send it to you ahead of time, uh, but it's kind of similar to the auditor, I have a request on employment. Uh, Leslie, as you know, the clerk, she's leaving July 11th, and we're advertising now for her replacement. Uh, I've gotten many applicants already, but we haven't chosen anyone, but 
what I'm asking is, uh, you know, we have the two week uh, policy for cross training. I'd like to extend that, possibly an extra two weeks if we could. Uh, her job, there's a lot of moving parts in her job. And uh, we've done this back when Linda retired. And I'm asking to do it again, um, up, up to a month. I don't know if I'll have someone hired in that amount of time, but uh, if I can get your blessing to hire somebody early. And you had the funding? I'd have to transfer it from okay. overtime or something. Yeah. But I can I can easily cover the cost and <coughs> not have to come to you. And okay. Take money out of any day or anything. I got lots of money left in those. Yeah, there's quite a bit left in the time. <laughs> no so snow last winter. I, it's, it's not going to be an issue, just a simple transfer. Right. Yeah, not that. That's a lot to learn out there. Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there, like I say, there's a lot of moving <coughs> parts. And just to go through claims or payroll once. Isn't enough. And no, I'd like right. to at least have it twice. Very lucky to have Leslie last several years. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been blessed. I had Linda and then Leslie. They both have done me a great service, so mm -hmm. uh, I'm hoping I can find somebody just as equally as good. Any comments from anybody? You don't feel like you can do that job? Too? I don't want to do that job. <laughs> I'll just be brutally honest about it. But I'm, I'm tied to it pretty good, so. <laughs> he has our blessing. I think he has our blessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I probably have to have a motion on I'll make the motion uh, to allow you to extend the training for the clerk's position from two weeks to four weeks. Bill made the motion. Second. See second. All in favor? Seven zero. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Gale. I actually only have two things. The $18,000. Well, <laughs> $18,000 from the EMPG grant should be deposited in uh, County General, and that's the um, Emergency Management Performance Grant that pays for a portion of our salary. And actually, that's just it. I don't have anything else. We already talked about EMS. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to, I've worked with Gail through this whole ambulance thing, and, and I appreciate your knowledge and your input. We, hopefully, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's not a train. <laughs> so let's, let's hope that after all we've been the ups and downs, we can get this thing behind us and the citizens of Fulton County are better off for it. So. Stressful. Sure. Appreciate your help. Thank you. Back to that. Pardon? Yes. On the ambulance, what, you said it's four and a half years. I might have misunderstood the commissioner's last time. Is it 1.2 for the next two years, 25, 27? It's 1.2 for, you'll pay 600,000 from year. July to December 31st. Right. And then the next year starts 1.2, obviously, um, you're starting your year. And then the last year is uh, 950,000. Okay, is that, so it's 1.2 the next two years? Correct. And then the third, Okay, you said the fourth. The fourth year is yeah. nine hundred and some thousand. Yeah, okay. The other three are one point two. It's an actual you three said, and a half year contract. contract. You said four and a half year contract. It's it is a four and a half year contract because we signed it from right July one. So twenty eight will be nine fifty also. No, this, the last year will be the nine. Hold on, Ron. It's three and a half years according to the yeah. So it's only it would have been yeah. four if you started January first. Yeah. first. 600,000, 1.2, 1.2, and 950. Right. That's three and a half years. Well, I, yeah. so I thought it was four years, four and a half years. <clears throat> I, think that that was, was, I think that was the goal. That's not going to place January 1, but it would have been four years. Well, yeah. per our conversations, uh, the attorneys left it as is three and a half years. Three, okay, all right. So then, I, then I'm mistaken. That's where I was then I'm, then I'm mistaken. That, 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 right. that came over yeah. yesterday. Okay, then I didn't. Because it was four and a half because we start January 1 with a four year contract. That's why I want to clarify. No, I'm sorry. No, my mistake. 
So it's 600 1212 950. That's the way I heard it. Everybody's nodding. Yep. Okay. Thank you. We have 2,000, so free for the patient for, for Fulton County Hope. Oh. So all the uh, resource brochures, so we have 2,000 because we went through the 1,000 in, I think, two months this year. So we ordered an additional 2,000, so those are um, can be obtained by emailing fchope46975 at gmail.com. Um, and they are no cost to anybody that would like them, so as many as you would need. Um, we received word at the Fulton County Hope quarterly meeting, which happened May 15th, that the Beeman Home has agreed to um, hire a part-time person to be established here in Fulton County to help with domestic violence situations. So they are working on those details and um, we are needing to meet with them to finalize what that looks like, but after all the research and conversation, they have agreed to do that. So, um, and then we have lots of other things that we are working on, but those are the two things I think that are the most important right now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, no other departments? Has anyone had a chance to look over the minutes? Yeah. And if there are no changes, Morning to discuss. I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes as written. So moved. Pete moved to approve the minutes. Second. I'll second. Phil second. And all in favor? 7 0. Thank you. <coughs> and now, gosh, we're getting real right We've got a couple of transfers. first transfer we have is from computer maintenance software to the prosecutor's office for $1,200. Goes into office supply for $1,200. Our office bought several bookshelves to increase our storage and organization at the office. I do not anticipate we will need to make a similar purchase for some time. Motion to approve. So moved. Bill approved. Second. Randy second. And all in favor? 7 0. Those we do not have to sign. True. Second transfer is from Fund 1161 to the Health Department 0197. Health Department Liaison request $18,745 for machinery and equipment. 18745 The explanation is claim for LifeLink for AED machines and LifeVac for schools in Fulton County. Not enough budgeted machinery and equipment to cover this claim. I will entertain any questions. I will entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Bill moved to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Jay seconded. All in favor? Seven zero. Thank you. And the last transfer is from Fund 1161 to the Health Department 0197. Repair and maintenance supplies 2494. Within the contractual services for 2494. The explanation claim for Woodlawn Hospital Services for Compassion Health Center patients. Not enough budgeted contractual services to cover this claim. Any questions? I will entertain a motion to approve. 
Pete, yeah. motion to approve. Lori seconded. All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. I'll sign those later. <coughs> and then we've got some additional appropriations. This fund is from Community Host Fee Revenue or Revenue Fund. And it is four. And it goes to the office for from the Office of Communications. This is account 44100, equipment, $135,378. Portable radios, the VP 5430-P11. Dash G slash 20 for the Fulton County Sheriff. 30 for the volunteers to be assigned to responders. The radios are county assets. Any questions? Anybody? I will entertain a motion to approve. So Steve moved. moved to approve. All second. Bill seconded. All in favor? 6 0 and Pete abstains. Thank you very much. That's the only one we got there. We got all that done. We got that done. Yes, we got signed. So, yes, we did. We got to sign this one. So, on to old business. Pete? No, sir. Randy? No, sir. Chase? No, sir. Lori? Steve? Bill? I have none. I have none. Yeah, okay. Alders, office have any? Yeah. Okay. Anyone hold business? What do we got from JK? Then we'll move on to new business. Pete? No, sir. Brandon? No, sir. Chase? No, sir. Lori? No. Steve? Well, I did. That's new, but that's one of the third one. We got all the flags up and graves all through the county. I meant this last night, but one here. All we've got all the last couple of weeks and a half we've been working on it. We've got it all done by Wednesday, and we're all going to go on that. All the veterans are honored properly. And well, thank you for spirit. I appreciate it. Thank you for the city for the generous donation to that. On the after the death, we just appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Bill. The only thing I have is uh, the county's portion of the host fee fund for February, March this year. Is seventy thousand two hundred and twenty-two dollars and forty-five cents. That's all I have. Uh, new business I have is two things, and of course I can't find it. But anyway, <laughs> um, I have an annual report that we receive every year from Logansport Memorial Hospital. If anybody's interested, you're more than welcome to read through it. Um, and also. I have a letter here it is and this is to all council members it is a called meeting on june 22nd 2024 at the renaissance hotel in indianapolis on the north side meridian street um, it's a meeting called to review new legislation professional development and sharing best practices if you are interested to attend get a hold of christina or the auditor's office so she can start a uh, transportation request and also um, they serve a meal and so I just want to let everyone know if anyone is interested I'll give you the, the letter and uh, we'll get with Christina to uh, decide whether or not you want to go or not it's a day long affair and also and I will read this because each council member that resides at least 50 miles from the conference location is entitled to reimbursement for lodging expense which is at the renaissance so if you're interested again you have to get a hold of christina so she can set it up because she'll pay for it through the county so we don't have to pay taxes on it other than that any new business then i will entertain a motion to adjourn so move lori move to adjourn second Pete seconded. All in favor? Thank you very much.